Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, we've been talking about believing in Jesus. Now, when you say you believe in Jesus, what are the things we are supposed to expect from you? That's what we've been dealing with um, this whole week, beginning from last week. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about Jesus. Said the first sign that follows them that believe is that in his name, they will cast out devils. In his name, they will cast out devils. Praise God. I want to show you something in Matthew chapter 16. Turn your Bibles there. I want to show you several instances and then explain to you why. It's, I've been telling you why it's so important that we cast out devils. You don't cast out devils because you're a preacher. Every believer, Jesus said, this sign shall follow not the preachers, but they that believe in me. Praise God. Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 23. Now, why well, I'm reading from Matthew because Matthew was there. So Matthew saw what happened. Now, that's the thing about the ghost. There are certain things that you rely on a first witness. So Matthew was a first witness in this case. So Matthew was a first witness. Now you see that Matthew was writing what he saw. So verse 20, let me start from verse 21 so that you know the background story. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Jesus was telling his disciples, he was explaining this to his disciples, that look, this is where I'm going to. This is what my life was going to happen to me. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now picture this, Jesus, this Jesus that we know, just turned and, and began to say, hey guys, you know what? I've been preaching to you guys, but I think it's high time I tell you this. I have a ministry to fulfill and this is why one of the reasons I came. I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to die. And then on the third day, I will raise from the dead. You're going to what? You're going to die. I don't understand. Die as in die, die. Did you mean sleep or die? I'm going to die. Huh? How? Jesus, you? How? They couldn't figure it out. Peter being bold enough. And most times, you know, it's Peter that used to speak up. Being bold enough, the Bible said he took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. I can tell Peter was telling Jesus, you've taught us how to use our tongue. What you're saying now is not a proper use of your tongue. How can you say you will die? From where? How many times have you corrected me not to speak about death? Praise God. Now then. Then Peter took him. I'm reading 22 again. Now then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. <laughs> Don't talk like this. You know how we say, no, it's your enemy that will die, not you. Praise <laughs> God. But now look at verse, verse 20. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Wow. Peter was rebuking him and saying, you can't talk like that out of genuine concern. And Jesus turned and looked at him and says, get it behind me, Satan. Now it's amazing. Now, was he calling Peter Satan? No. No. Was Peter possessed by Satan at that moment? Not necessarily. You see, Peter didn't go, you shall not die. No. Now, logically, if you were there, 
you would have seen one expressing genuine concern. But Jesus didn't hear a genuine concern. He heard an opposing voice from Satan. You see, sometimes, why am I sharing this with you? Sometimes you are not sensitive enough to know when is the, it is the devil that is communicating to you. Now, it's not about the person that is speaking. Now, especially when it has to do with close relatives, close people around us, you don't realize when Satan is bridging the communication gap. And this happens to a lot of people. And before you know what's happening, there's something said, there's another thing said, and then before you know what's happening, a wrong decision has been taken. But Jesus was quick here to say, hey, shut up, Satan. Get thee behind me. Now, I told you this before. Where was Satan speaking? Was the word Peter, was, 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 I mean, was Jesus referring to the words Peter was speaking? No, Jesus was referring to the words he was hearing. To speak is one thing, to hear is another thing. And that's one prayer you should pray for yourself. That when you're, you're hearing and you're listening should align. Because you're listening with your ears, but you hear with your heart. And when your heart is blocked, you know, that's where Satan comes in. You will hear differently. Someone will say something innocently, but then you will hear the wrong thing. And you most times respond to what you hear, not what was said. You respond to what you hear. Now, that's how life is. It's deeper than just the speaking of the mouth. Praise God. So, Jesus rebuked Satan immediately. He didn't waste time. Jesus didn't assume, eh, no, no, I understand Peter. No. He, he was quick to recognize that, hey, Satan has interfered with this communication. Get out, Satan. That's what he did. He said, get behind me, Satan. Now, this was innocent Peter now. I told you, see, there is no way you're going to walk with God that you will not encounter devils. It's impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible. So you're living your life, you've not encountered demonic, um, you've not got into a situation where you have to, have to bind Satan or cast out devils. Then you're not living for God. I'm telling you, because they are opposing, they, they, they oppose. Now look at what Jesus said here. He says, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. That's all they are mindful about. And that's all they know. No demon spirit knows things about God. None. None. They only know things about men. See, that's why, you know, when, 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 when people spend their time interviewing demons, and they begin to talk about different things. So I guess what they were talking about. I'm the one that killed this old person. I'm the one that did this thing. They are talking about things of men. No demon can give you revelation. <laughs> Praise God. You know, Jesus, when Jesus was, no demon can give you revelation. If they cook up revelation, it's even so easy to detect the falseness in it. Praise God. So that's exactly what happened here. Satan, demons don't, um, they, they are not mindful of the things of God. They are mindful of the things of men. So when the suggestions come into your mind are always about the things of men. Hey, you know, you know, sometimes now, I'm, I'm, you see, I'm careful not to make you start thinking that, oh, and you don't have to be, spooky. I've told you this how many times, you don't have to be spooky about this. But see, let me tell you the truth. You deal with demonic activities every day. Every day. Or oh, somebody does something. Yeah, if it's me. Oh, if you know what I would have done. Now, you look at the person who's speaking. He's only minding the things of men. Now, you know that, see, every thought has a root. Every understanding has a root. And we must be, see, you know, Jesus said we should go and disciple the world. Believers in Christ Jesus ought to wake up and let demon spirits know that we are aware of them and we know how to block them. Because whatever you see, most of the things going on in the world and these affect worldly leaders, these, they don't have respect for authority. 
They enter into every place and want to influence everything. These are how demon, that's how demon spirits operate. And they operate through men. They don't just come into trees and start shaking the trees and the trees will be talking. No. They operate through men. They influence their thoughts. They influence their words. That's how they operate. And when you are not conscious of them, you will have rulers ruling over you with demonic spirits. And they will be making laws that, that are influenced by demons. And guess what they are after? To trap you. So there are laws that are being made today that the effect of it will be seen in 10, 20 years time. But you are just careless. You, know? you see, when we talk about God's children feeling everywhere, the reason is not because we want to say, oh, that person there is in my church. Oh, that one there came from our church. That's silly. Believe me, that's silly. It is because of how much this person is going to allow the influence of the Holy Spirit control him. So when we push believers into places of authority, it's not just because they are in our church. It's because they, I am not among the East Re, Remember the, the, the apostles when they had this issue with uh, division amongst them and some people began to complain. Guess what they say? They say, choose seven men who are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Now, how do you know one who's full of the Holy Spirit? It's not the one who's only, ah, shakalabaya. Oh, oh, oh. Nah. He is one who's controlled by the Holy Spirit. Why are you doing this? And, ah, do you know this morning the Holy Spirit told me um, this is how we should go about this? Uh -huh. well, do you know? How? And you will know by their fruit, you will know them. That's what Jesus said. By their fruit. You will. So when they say this is what the Holy Spirit told me and they go ahead and do it, you see the results. You're like, oh, wow. You really heard from the Holy Spirit. So I'm not talking about people who are using Holy Spirit to intimidate other people. Say, so brother goes and say, oh, sister, uh, the Holy Spirit said, you are my wife. So you better comply because God will only speak it once. You better run from such people. Praise <laughs> God. Because they are lying. If the Holy Spirit have spoken, see, there's, there's something about the, the speaking of the Spirit. When he speaks, there is an impartation to understand that comes to you. And in his word, if you've heard the Holy Spirit, his word itself gives you an attitude. See that now? His word gives you an attitude. And that attitude is the attitude of meekness and gentleness. So when somebody comes and says, hey, the Holy Spirit just told me this. Like, I am telling you now, this is what the Holy Spirit has said. So I don't know what you want to do about it. You better do it. Someone says, the Holy Spirit says, go and empty your account and come and give it. You better go and do it now because, uh-uh, uh-uh. If the Holy Spirit has said that, see, there must be, you that he has spoken to, there is an attitude of patience for his confirmation. So that's why even those who function in the prophetic, they don't really say everything the Lord has said. They don't. They say a part. The other part, because a, a true prophet will not force the fulfillment of what he has said. A true prophet will wait for the manifestation. See that now. Now it happens sometimes, you know, you're talking to someone and and the Lord just says, this person is, I remember I was speaking to somebody one time, the person was sharing a, a bit of uh, some challenges. And then the Lord began to speak to him, he said, this is why this challenge is there. And then he, and then he now specified to where this person is from. I heard the Lord said, this person is from so and so place. And then he, the Lord began to connect the dots to me. You know, so I'm like, okay. So I, act, I interjected, I'm like, sorry, where are you from? person confirmed that I'm from Susan Super. I said, oh, I see. I see. And the person was only, why did you just ask me where I'm from? Now, you see, I could have done it the other way. I could have said, pause. You're from Susan So place. And this is what, and the person said, wow, way. Now, now, no, see, it's the idea is not to sound like a prophet or spirit. The idea is to solve the problem. Okay. So now I'm hearing the Holy Spirit tell me. And I said, okay, where are you from? I'm from Susan so place. Now that means what the Holy Spirit is telling me is true. So now I'm beginning to look at the solutions the Holy Spirit is giving me, knowing that truly that's the solution that will work in this situation. Now that's how the Holy Spirit operates. So we are not here to prove that we, we, we are spiritual. No, by the fruit. So we are concerned about producing the right fruit. 
You see, now then, Jesus in this case told Peter, look, you are only concerned about the things of men, not the things of God. But now that's to also tell you that the Holy Spirit is concerned about the things of God, even when he's dealing with men. I'll show you something else. Acts chapter 13. I want you to thank you, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse, verse 6. Now, when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergeant Paulus, an intelligent man. Take note of this. Who's the intelligent man? Sergeant, no, Sergius, Sergius Paulus. That's the one who was referring to, who he referred to as an intelligent man. Now, this man was, he gave, oh, now look at what this is. He says, this man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud. <laughs> now, now, you see, now this, this is a sorcerer. Now, maybe they didn't even know he was a sorcerer. It's possible. But then they just noticed that there was an interference in their trying to reach out to this man. Now, the man has sent for them. Come, I want to, I, you guys talk to me about this Jesus thing. And so they began to pray. But this man was always interrupting and seeking to turn the heart of the man away from what they were talking about. Have you met people like that before? You're trying to share the gospel. You're trying to sort out something. And this is better. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> Paul says, Oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all unrighteousness, will you not cease preventing the straight way of the Lord? See what another thing they do? They prevent the straight. Now, the way of the Lord is straight, it's not bent, it's straight. Paul says, Will you not stop? He says, Will you not cease preventing the straight way of the Lord? I know the rest of the story. Paul commanded the man to be blind, not seen for a season. Now, this is a case where one, because the man himself is a sorcerer, so he's been he's giving himself over to the devil. So the man, this man was benefiting from the uh the 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 consular. He he was benefiting from him. So now he felt if this man should hear the gospel, I, I will lose my you know, those benefits I used to get. So, that, not, so the man was willingly giving to demonic practice. You understand that? So Paul actually shut the man down. You see that? Now these are things you deal with. You will, meet, you will definitely meet people who have deliberately, willfully given themselves to demonic operations. Oh, they do. There are people like that. It's not everyone who's possessed by the devil or influenced by the devil that they are ignorant of it. Some of them actually invite or work or do things that inspire demonic activities in their life and they enjoy it. There are prophets who prophesy by demonic influence and they enjoy it. And some of you will not even know that this is, this, this ministry or this minister or this prophet works under a demonic influence. Some of you will not, never know until the Spirit of God opens your eyes. I'll show you something in the scripture tomorrow. Praise God, because my time is up. I pray for you. Listen, I'm sharing this because it's so important and I pray your understanding is open. That the Spirit of God will help you indeed, especially in this season. That you will be sensitive to see activities of demons and take action against them. That your way will be open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.